Welcome to the Gadget Guidebook, where our Law Tours Research and Development Division break down some of the most fascinating gadgets and tech from across the multiverse. And we've got a treat for you today, as recently on a regularly scheduled trip to the forest moon of Endor, one of our ship captains stumbled across an Ewok yard sale, and these furry little builder bears were all too happy to sell us their vast collection of Stormtrooper battle armor which we hastily brought back to our R&D team, ready to crack it open and figure out what it's capable of. So if you're looking to gear up and serve as one of the Emperor's elite stormtroopers, then join us today for this breakdown of the infamous stormtrooper armour. Following the immediate fall of the Galactic Republic and dawn of a new empire, a transition occurred in which the new Imperial military switched from a costly clone army to a military filled with conscripted regular humans from across the galaxy. And to accompany this switch, a change in armour was also required, switching away from the Phase 2 clone armour, which had ironically become increasingly customised by its identical troopers, to a standardised set of mass-produced armour ready to turn an army of diverse and unique humans into a faceless, intimidating force ready to pacify the galaxy. The task of designing this armour fell to the Imperial Department of Military Research, being given the mission to design an armour that was both easy to mass-produce and versatile enough to adapt to a variety of environments from the icy plains of Hoth to the sweltering sands of Tatooine. The design that was eventually settled on consisted of a number of separate sections that all worked together to create a highly resourceful and rugged bit of kit. If you were to enlist and acquire one of these suits, you would first be clothed in a vacuum sealed black body glove that served as the suit's base layer. Now this figure hugging layer may not have provided much physical protection on its own, but it was absolutely brimming with features designed to help you and your stormtrooper comrades keep fighting in some of the galaxy's toughest conditions. To begin with, insulating and cushioning layers were added to the body glove to keep you warm and protected from physical impacts. And this tight layer also had some means of regulating body temperature during physical exertion, keeping you cool and comfortable whilst chasing rebel scum. If while chasing enemies of the Empire, you were to fall and graze your knee or suffer some other form of cut, the compression sleeve nature of the body glove would also serve to help stem the bleeding coming from the wound. And if the relatively extreme situation of a reactor leak were to occur, this suit would also offer you some radiation protection, helping to preserve your cellular integrity. Atop this body sleeve, you would then affix a total of 18 separate pieces of white plastoid body armour. Strongest around the chest, these armour plates could disperse the energy of most handheld blasters, spreading the force of the blast across its surface. But they're not just designed to protect you against blaster fire, the armour will also shield you from flames, corrosive chemicals, and the impact of some projectiles or blast shrapnel. These plates have more to them than just physical protection however. Below the chest armour there lays a control panel, and it is responsible for the suit's environmental control features. When wearing your new set of armour, this control panel would allow you to manually adjust the suit's environmental regulation features that are provided by the bodysuit and helmet, cooling and warming the armour, or helping control the atmosphere on hostile worlds. Along the arms of your new armour, you'll find that the forearms have been reinforced to better help intercept vibroblades should you get up close and personal with an angry Mandalorian. Further down the armour lay the rather misshaped and uneven looking knee armour. Within this unique design lay a couple of ingenious additions to the armour. The rather bulky section on the right thigh armour is actually a grouping of additional auxiliary energy cells, while the knee plate on the left leg is modified to feature a reinforced ridge designed to protect your knee when firing from a kneeling position. And if you thought that was a neat little addition, wait until you find out what's in your new utility belt as it's positively overflowing with gadgets, including a compact toolkit, combat equipment such as blaster power packs and a thermal detonator, energy supplies such as food rations, flares and a med pack, 
as well as binoculars and prisoner wrist binders. It even has a basic grappling hook, seemingly for swinging across random caverns that, for whatever reason, can be found in some spacecraft. There's also an encrypted telemetry transmitter on the belt, a small disc that is detected by the helmets of fellow stormtroopers, showing up on the troopers' heads-up display to help distinguish their near-identical comrades. The helmet's polarised lenses and visual processor will work to assist you in seeing in low visibility conditions, such as a dark or smoky room, while also shielding your eyes from the bright glare of blaster fire and explosions. Elsewhere in the corner of your heads-up display, you can find targeting diagnostics, suit power levels, and up-to-date environmental readings. You can use the helmet's inbuilt comlink and broadband communications antenna to access data on various military subjects and civilian organizations, then communicate back any crucial information to base. The headgear also features motion sensors, ready to alert you to any enemies you might have missed. Two artificial air supply hoses and an air filtration system help you survive in hostile environments. And seeking to discourage non-essential chatter, which was strictly off-limits whilst on duty, the Empire installed in these helmets an audio recording device, noting down everything that was said by the user and sending it back to monitors for review. Once you've got all your gear assembled, you'll be ready to head out to the stars and start subjugating galactic citizens as one of the Emperor's elite shock troops. Be warned, however, whilst this armour has made stormtroopers a feared sight amongst lesser equipped rebels and criminal scum throughout the galaxy, the armour does not make you immortal. Blaster fire from short range or emitted from particularly powerful weapons can pierce the plastoid plates, and the suit has shown vulnerabilities to certain blunt force weaponry. In fact, even primitive weapons wielded by teddy bears can defeat this armour, if directed at the exposed body glove in the gaps between plates. But even if you do fall, fear not, as your demise will still serve the Empire by demoralising your foes because as soon as a stormtrooper falls, another identical trooper is ready to step in and take their place in the battle, giving the rebels fighting them the feeling that they are fighting an endless horde of identical troops, all ready to do the Emperor's evil bidding. So all of this really just leaves us with one question. Given all of the tech in this armour, enough practically to turn these guys into the Iron Men of the Star Wars universe, why can they still not hit the side of a Banff with a blaster cannon? What would you add to this armour if you could modify it? Your own jetpack? A Yankee Candle diffuser, perhaps? Make sure to let us know down in the comments. And if you enjoyed this breakdown, then please do consider subscribing, as it would be very lovely to have you with us again soon. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. The Lord Tours Spaceport is your destination for tours through the most fascinating worlds, groups, and events in the multiverse. From sci-fi to fantasy, we have it all, so make sure to subscribe and book your next trip with us.